The best landing spots for the Jets' three biggest free agents. Now, the Jets have a, quite a few free agents, but there are three in particular who probably will generate some, some legitimate conversation. So you got Marcus May, Morgan Moses, and Jameson Crowder. Now, obviously, you're talking about a team that is not doing very well. So it may be hard to believe that any of their, like, especially multiple free agents from the team, would be people that you uh, that teams might be after, right? But I think that that I think there's something to be said for at least for at least two of these guys, right? I'm not so sure about Marcus May. I know he hasn't played much this year; he's been hurt. But I'm not so sure that he garners that kind of a, of attention. He's been a really durable guy most of his career. 16 games played, 16 starts. But this has been a guy who's played a lot for bad defenses. So I'm not sure how much people love him. Morgan Moses is a legitimate offensive lineman who can plug in for a few different places. We definitely know that. I believe Jamison Crowder is a playmaking guy who needs to play with the right kind of quarterback. So I'm down with those two guys. Not so sure about Marcus May. But I want to start with Ryan. I want to ask you. What do you think is the best landing spot for those free agents? Maybe even if it's staying at home with the Jets. Yeah, with Marcus May, I have no idea what his contract is going to look like. Um, I think Spot Track has him probably taking maybe a one year deal, maybe a one year prove it type of deal. If not, maybe a team you know goes overboard and you know gives him a three or four year deal, um, ten, eleven million dollars a year. But I, I don't think that going to happen as of right now i mean things could change but as far as teams are concerned i'm looking at the baltimore ravens with uh, marcus may um just because i'm looking at their scoring defense you know uh, statistics i think they're 30th in uh yards pass attempt i think their safety position as a whole needs some work uh so i i, I think that's some like that i think that's an area where the ravens i'm looking at their uh, cap space. I think they have enough cap space. And then I mentioned a week ago that Tom Pilsner reported that there's going to be uh, 16 more uh, million dollars more in cap space. So, you know, with the Ravens, they're a borderline playoff team right now. But I think if they can add the right pieces and Marcus May is not that old. He's what, like 27? How, how 28, old? 28, 28. Yeah, 28, he's 28 so years old. I think that would be a great destination for him, and it's a win now uh, destination, unlike the Jets. So I, I think that would be okay. I, I've been looking at the rookie safety. Brandon Stevens has had a disaster of a season, so I, I think that would be a good destination for him. And as far as the other two is concerned, um, I think uh, the Jets should retain Morgan uh, Morgan Moses just because you can never have enough uh, depth on the offensive line. But let's just say that another team needs Morgan Moses more because if you look at the Jets, they have you know. Beckton and George Fant on the two sides. Um, I would look at the Bengals uh, for Morgan Moses just because they lost Riley Reef on um, this season. He's on a one year contract. Uh, they need a right tackle in the offseason. And if you look at free agents when it comes to right tackles, it, it's really unappealing. And that that's the one guy I look at pro football focus. I think he's in the top 70 uh, when it comes to, you know, free agents in this uh, upcoming offseason. So I, I look at Morgan Moses in Cincinnati as a good fit. Um, I didn't really look at too many other teams, to be honest, but I think Bengals, I think that's a good fit. Um, and for Jameson Crowder, I looked at three teams. I'm going to give you three right here because there's always teams that need wide receivers. Uh, the first one would be the Chiefs. Um, I, you know, they always need a third receiver, and they never really got it from a Cole Hardman. You know, of course, they have Tyree Kill. They've had Sammy Watkins in the past, and Kelsey's pretty much the 1A, 1B with Hill and Kelsey. But I think the Chiefs would be a wonderful destination for him. And I, he still has it, man. Like, some people wrote him off a year or two ago, and he still has it. Um, you know, the injuries were a concern heading into his tenure with the Jets. But, look, he, he's he's a guy that can flat-out ball underneath um, and if he has a, a quarterback that can be in rapport with him, I can guarantee you he can get at least 70, 70 catches in an offense in Kansas City. Um, and the other two, I'm not going to talk too much because they're in, I think it's from Chiefs to like you're going to the gutter with these other two teams, and that's the Jaguars and the Lions. Um, the Jaguars, they need wide receivers. I mean, that's without question. Yeah. Mark Jones, 500-something rec uh, receiving yards is the leader. 
for the Jacksonville and the Lions as well. I know they got St. Brown, but they need more help in that area. So th- those are the two teams that really need wide receivers badly. And they need a number one, obviously, but James and Crowder can fill in as that veteran uh, for the Jaguars and the Lions. I like it. I like it. I, I like uh, a lot of what you said there. Um, I would probably go different directions for each of those, but I still think what you said makes some sense. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, Marcus May. As far as I'm concerned, looking forward to um, what looks to be is going to be a very different year for this particular team in terms of you should see a lot of turnover. Um Ooh. I'm talking about the Chicago Bears. Um, They have to do a lot in terms of changing up what they're going to do defensively, what they're going to do from a salary cap standpoint. There's probably going to be some high-priced, big-name guys that are looking for different places to play next year. One of those guys very well could be Eddie Jackson. And if Eddie Jackson, because Eddie Jackson has a humongous contract, and if the Bears can find any way at all to get from under this based off the way he's played, I think they probably take that 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 chance. I do believe Marcus May is in a one-year prove-it deal sort of a situation. He's on injury reserve right now, six games played this season. He hasn't been spectacular. At best, he's been solid, at best. Uh, so in that sort of a situation, you're looking to find a spot where you can have a veteran who understands, knows how to play, but the Bears very well could be in the market to draft a free agent, a draft a free safety. And if they do that, that they're not necessarily ready to throw out on the field immediately. Maybe Marcus May is the veteran who starts in week one. And then you hope that that rookie free safety proves that he's ready to play earlier. So I could see something like that or Marcus May being a similar style or someone similar to him coming in. I'm going to stay in the NFC North for Morgan Moses and uh, the Packers offensive line has been wrecked with injuries this year. Um, just finding a hard time finding continuity overall. And I like the I like putting a veteran like Moses in front of hopefully if you're a Green Bay Packers fan, Aaron Rodgers coming back for another season. I think um, behind wanting to make sure Devontae Adams is joining him is Aaron's going to want some protection there. And I think that's just overall, I think the Green Bay organization, the franchise, even the fans have really protected um, Aaron Rodgers quite a bit um, this year with all of the issues and things that have happened. Uh, So, you know, with the vaccine situation and all of that stuff, they haven't really beaten him up. So maybe he softened his whole feel towards that organization it won't be as easy for him to walk away as we thought it would be it looked like it was just a done deal maybe that's not the case if it's not the case i could imagine jordan love wanting to go somewhere else pretty soon because if not he's going to be sitting for a long time so we'll see what happens uh as far as that but i still like morgan moses there as far as jameson crowder i'm going to say the baltimore ravens it feels that they are always in search of a wide receiver who can be a playmaker with the ball after the catch. Jameson Crowder has proven to be that kind of a player throughout his career. He unfortunately is a guy who hasn't really had, he's never really had the the the, the pleasure of playing with a really good quarterback. And then he has battled some injuries himself uh, throughout, this, uh, throughout his um, career, especially this season playing in only 11 games. But even in those 11 games, he's already got 50 catches, 431 yards, two touchdowns. If you think about it, he would be probably close to having an opportunity to maybe have a 100-catch season and close to a 1,000 yards receiving. He'd be in the ballpark if he had played the uh, more games. So um, I think, I mean, if you look at it, he's been far more productive than Corey Davis, who started every game uh, that he's played this year. He played in nine of them and started in all of them. So uh, I don't know. I I really like Jameson Crowder. He's a little undersized, but he's that spark plug kind of tough guy that I think would be really uh, work really well with with Lamar Jackson. So the Ravens are the team that I see for him. What would you say, uh, Mr. Reyna? 
Yeah, so I want to start with uh, Jamison Crowder. And, I mean, Baltimore is definitely a legit spot because they have succeeded with receivers of his stature. Now, I actually am going to go out west with Jamison Crowder and add a couple more teams. One is actually the 49ers, and here's the reason why I say that. Muhammad Sanu is a free agent. Jawan Jennings, even though he stepped up as a late for the 49ers, he's also a free agent. And even though Brendan Ayuk has stepped up as – as a blade, especially on the deep red end, they realistically right now, they don't have a deep red opposite of IU because they put Debo Samuel in the backfield. So I think maybe perhaps Jameson Crowder, maybe Robert Sala, a former 49er, could put in the good work for Kyle Shanahan and maybe look to see if Jameson Crowder could fit in there. I'm also going to stay out west, but in the AFC with the Las Vegas Raiders. We all know they love speed. They've also loved like sometimes the five nine five ten receivers. I also have to wonder what's going to happen with Deshaun Jackson. Does he stay? Is he at this? I mean, I- I'm thinking like he's on his way out. Maybe you could be a little bit more youthful and bring in Jameson Crowder, Morgan Moses. You know, I definitely agree with Green Bay. I'm going to add one more team that's had trouble protecting their quarterback. And that's the Tennessee Titans. I believe it's Ryan Tannehill, who at one time he he was the league leader in in most sacks. So they need all kinds of offensive line help, especially heading into next year if they want to take that next step and head to the Super Bowl. Marcus, me, I, I'm with you guys too. It's like I feel like that he he's a hard guy to gauge because I just feel like I haven't seen much from him. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking maybe. Just maybe, and I, I have to go back to the 49ers because of the list of free agents they have. I mean, Jakiski Tart is a free agent. You know, they have they have two other free agents in Harris, and then also, um, I believe it's, um, I'm trying to think here, who's, it's actually uh, the one of their other safeties who hasn't really played tough on Wilson, but they have three free agents at safety. And so I'm thinking maybe it could be a prove-it deal where, you bring him in for one year, see if he could mix in with Jimmy Ward and their rookie to to to, to, to Noah Funga. I mean, I have a hard time pronouncing his name as well, but the rookie from USC. So maybe out west is where most of these guys are going to trek. Could be, could be. I mean, uh, a mass exodus west could happen uh, with the Jets. Uh, Paul Boy Green, as then you are a. Um, Jets specialist, I would love to hear what you say about these three guys. Uh, let me Im- immediately change my little nickname here to Paul Boy Green Eston to Resident Jets Specialist, Paul Eston. Yeah, put it I, in. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Make, 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 it stick. make it stick. Make it stick. Yeah. With that being said, we'll start with Marcus May. Obviously, unfortunately, ruptured his Achilles. A routine mm-hmm. play goes to step back. Ankle gives out. And uh, people say when you blow out your Achilles, you feel like someone kicked you in the back of the leg. So when he stepped back, he looked to see who hit him, but no one was there. So that's the unfortunate nature of the Achilles. And because it was so late in the season uh, when he ruptured that Achilles, he is likely not going to be ready immediately. Uh, He's hoping to be back at some point during training camp next year for whatever team he plays for. He's currently playing on the franchise tag. Unfortunately, the relationship is burnt with the Jets, or I would have simply suggested the easiest thing to do is just do a one-up deal, prove it, look fantastic, and then go get your bag. But unfortunately, that relationship was really destroyed between Marcus May uh, and his agent and the New York Jets uh, based on some underhanded things that were happening Mm -hmm. on the negotiating uh, front. So with that being said, for Marcus May, let's reunite him with his best buddy, Jamal Adams, out there in Seattle. They clearly need some help on the back end of that defense. The Legion of Boom is the Legion of uh, no. I mean, it's just not there. So, uh, quite frankly, uh, Marcus Mace is still text with Jamal Adams every day. You know what? Let me help you. Help me help you. Jamal Adams, Marcus May reunited there on the West Coast. And again, I think it's 100% a one-year prove-it deal. It's unfortunate for him, but that's the only thing he's going to get. That long-term deal he was uh, aspiring and hoping for, he didn't take it from the Jets. He wanted more money, and that's a risk these players take, unfortunately. So Marcus May uh, to Seattle. Morgan Moses, this is the one I'll say the Jets are going to do everything in their power to re-sign. They tried to get him to sign a multi-year deal. Remember, Washington released him very late in the process, so he kind of had this late free agency tour limited options, limited money out there. The Jets offered a two-year deal. Morgan Moses and his agent uh, did not bite on that. By the way, on my YouTube channel, I interviewed the guy that broke that story, Sam Fortier for the Washington Post. Shameless plug. 
But with that being said, I believe the Jets are going to push the chips in the middle of the table. They're going to get Morgan Moses back. Ryan said it best. You can never have enough uh, offensive tackle depth. So they're going to do everything in their power to bring back Morgan. And finally, Crowder, I mean, throw a dart at the board. This guy could go anywhere. There is going to be a lot of interest for a guy that could just be a producer. You guys mentioned Chiefs make sense, all these teams. A team I haven't heard you guys say, and to me it's an ideal fit, is the New Orleans Saints. Michael Thomas badly needs a Robin to his Batman, and quite frankly, they may need a Batman to their Batman because Michael Thomas has been to MIA, quite frankly. So they need somebody. He reminds me of that Sean Payton slot that can do it all, mismatch nightmare in the middle again no one thinks of Jameson Crowder you think of all the best receivers in the league he's never in that conversation but he's just reliable he's consistent he moves the chains he's savvy I think he's a great fit there in New Orleans and I think that's a place you could go but again any number of teams Green Bay would be interested Kansas City would be interested Baltimore even with all their receiver issues and getting just a reliable guy there's just so much interest around the league with Jameson he will not find a problem finding a home this offseason so you mentioned his work in the slot. Um, yeah. uh, one of the teams that has also gotten some great production over the years in the slot is your other favorite team, the New England Patriots. And so, <laughs> so they don't currently have a player who is really producing in the slot uh, the way they've come become accustomed to seeing that with Julian Edelman and Wes Welker and those guys and yeah. Deion Branch and people like that. Do you see – a way where Jamison Crowder might find, because I, if I'm not mistaken, um, Bill Belichick has, you know, spoke glowingly about Jamison Crowder in the past. And we all know how that works. Hmm. He speaks glowingly about a guy three to four years before he goes ahead and tries to sign him. I'm really just waiting on the day when Hunter Renfro becomes a, a, new, a member of the New England yeah. Patriots because yeah. it just feels like it's just going to happen at some point. Um, and I have a feeling he has ability. He has the ability to be even better at that role than Edelman and Wes Welker. But we'll yeah. see what happens. Wow. But, uh, Hunter Winfrey is a beast. Like he really is a beast. The, the that that kid is nasty. And another guy who the Patriots could have had instead of Nikhil Harry. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> the Patriots yeah. might want topic, uh, yeah. the Patriots but, might want Braxton Berrios back too. Yeah, yeah. Another guy. yeah. Thanks for well, that I think mm-hmm. he's definitely getting it done as a returner. I don't know if he has quite shown it yet, but you know, and the, you know, it's, a, it's funny how jet slot guys seem like they probably would have been really good fits with the Jets. Imagine Wayne Krabat. No, don't say it, please. As a Patriot. Oh, disgusting. It just seems like it should have happened, right? Just Wayne Corbett just seemed like he should have been a Patriot. No. No. But I will say this, Brian. He said no. (laughs) No. Copper boy. Can't have Wayne. (laughs) No Wayne Corbett. He would have been Wes Welker before Wes Welker. (laughs) Yeah, I will feed the New England point, though. Uh, You know, I think Jameson really has some odd feelings with the Jets right now. Remember, in the offseason, he was due $10 million. And this is the classic thing as a fan. Do you root for the team or do you root for the player in these situations? Jameson was owed $10 million. The Jets said, Jameson, that's not going to happen, buddy. We're, you're going to take less or, or else. And Jameson's like, what's or else mean? Well, don't take the pay cut and we'll tell you. So, unfortunately, it was a very awkward negotiation. Jameson met with the media after and said, yeah, didn't know they were going to come to me with a pay cut. That was kind of weird, but I guess I'm here. They sliced his contract in half. It was $10 million, non-guaranteed. They could have cut him at any point. He would have lost all of it. And they renegotiated it. It was a one-year deal to $5 million, fully guaranteed with some incentives. So I think he has some weird feelings with the Jets. I think he would love nothing better than to go to a rival and get to give it to the Jets twice a year and be able to show some hutzpah. So the Patriots would be an ideal fit, a perfect fit with everything you just said from a production standpoint, what he can provide. And again, Jameson is a nice, quiet guy. But I think, again, that he'd love nothing more than the sweet, juicy revenge the New England Patriots could provide uh, starting this offseason. 